I think we should start the podcast off by talking about you you butchering people's names before the actual intro. So, like, <laughs> um, so it's something that do we do, what? Stephanie. I, like, it's, do you know what? I go by my middle name and my my surname, obviously, but my first name. I should have just said that. So I just watched him absolutely curl into a ball. <laughs> no, I'll still give it a go, but I'll, I'll end up butchering it, and you can correct me. That's how it generally works. Okay. Well, okay. Anyway, hi everyone. A little bit of a different intro to the Microsoft Spotlight podcast, but let's keep it moving and fluid. Like <laughs> today, we are joined by obviously myself, John Jarvis, usual host of the Spotlight podcast, and also Andrew. How are you doing today? I am good. Bit of a headache. Uh, obviously, a different intro because you know on the last couple of episodes, I have butchered uh, guest names quite severely <laughs> and had a bit of a laugh and a giggle about it. But you know. It's Not only butchers, but you've you've changed you've changed people's names in the past as well, which has been been great. Yeah, well, it's, it's one of them, isn't it? You, you got you got to try. If you don't try, you don't learn. That's what, that's what I say. It's, it's true, yeah. But today our guest is the one and only Stephanie Winter. How are you doing, Stephanie? You good? I'm fine. I'm a bit sweaty. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I've closed all the windows because um, it's a bit, a bit not noisy. But oh, just so glad to be. I really, I really honoured actually, guys, because I've looked through um, your stuff and I just think oh, you're doing really good work. I don't know if you know. Like, has anybody given you any feedback about that? Not that you need it, but I'm just saying it's it's a bit of a niche to do this type of uh, podcast. So um, you're really representing out there. So well done. Thank you. Um, yeah, go on, Andrew. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's always good to get feedback. I mean, we do have, obviously, you know, past guests who said, oh, oh I didn't realise you had X, Y, and Z on. And so it's, it's good to, you know, get that recognition because in the day, we're here to basically share your story because, you know, as you say, it is a niche. There's not many people out there doing it. And obviously, we try and obviously try and do it in a, a fun way to make sure people learn about you know, the actual person because, in the day people's stories are timeless where if me and john did a tech podcast it'd be out of date in a couple of weeks time so it's a bit pointless really so i, so I see it yeah 100 100 but yeah it's um yeah it's, it's good it's it's good I, I really like i really like the podcast as i said to andrew and a few other people like it's just fun to do it's good to talk to different people like um and understand different different people's stories and stuff like that and by by large, it's it's yeah, it's just enjoyable in all honesty. Um, it's forty five minutes out of the day where you can just sit down and chat and to different people and different stories and yeah, it's it's just it's an enjoyable forty five minutes for me. It, it it's not what it's not like work or, or hard. So if people are in listening and stuff like that and and get a little bit from everyone's stories, oh yeah, it, it's it's good for us. Like one. One week we could be having a fun session and, and talking about different stuff. And then the next week we could be talking about a bit more of a serious topic and stuff. And yeah. we've just done a World Mental Health um, Day um, episode. I don't know about you, Andrew, off the back of that, like I was feeling like, oh, a bit like a bit down type thing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I say, obviously, by the time this episode goes out, the mental health episode will already been released. It goes out on the, the 10th of uh, October. I say that as an episode that was obviously for me very eye opening because it's nice to hear from other people who have experienced mental health issues who are yeah. not too dissimilar to myself. So, yeah, if you have if you listen to this podcast, listen to this episode, haven't listened to that one yet, go back, have a listen, let us know your thoughts. Yeah, and at the moment it's the 5th of October, so we this game released after, but South Coast Summit next weekend. Yeah, this is to go up uh, two weeks after South Coast, so like 24th, which I think so. So for us, it's South Coast Summit next weekend, so we've got quite a lot of um, cool stuff um, happening there. I'm talking, um, and then we're also doing a roundtable with Women in Tech with some really co cool guests. So maybe, because it's retrospective now, and it might be on YouTube, like, let's go and listen to us. Like, go to listen to the episodes. It's really cool. It'd be really cool. But anyway, Stephanie, you're today's guest. Awesome. So... You said that you started your in the IT um, IT market two two years ago, and you started and you became a certified Microsoft trainer um, and also a Microsoft, yeah Microsoft Teams trainer. Kind of how did that all start? What made you think 
yeah, that, this is the the next step for me. What what brought you to the industry? You know, the so it kind of started years and years and years ago, uh, which um, with one of my um, I one of those I wish I had. So uh, at school, um, I was doing a GMVQ in information technology, and I passed it and everything. But at the end of that, I was saying to everybody, I'm going to be a computer programmer, and I'm going to really make a difference. Um, and the guys in the, in the uh, course were like, uh, you're a girl, <laughs> don't be stupid. Mm. So <laughs> I was like, oh, well, OK. Um, and I kind of walked out like, I'm still going to do it. But then by the end of the day, I was like really defeated. And then I didn't really get that kind of uplifting, um, kind of supportive uh, uh, kind of, you know, from my friends or from, from my family. And I just thought, oh, OK, well, maybe that's not what I should be doing. So I just went on another path. Um, but back in um, 2020, I was looking at this role um, within the trust that I'm in right now um, for a Microsoft um, Teams live events producer and trainer and just thought, this is me. I really like um, Teams. Um, I really need to know more. I need to build more confidence in, in it because I feel like we are migrating over from our shared drives um, into here and I'm pressing all these buttons and it's really exciting what's what's in here and what we can do um, and this will give me the opportunity to to be maybe like a subject matter expert in that and really contribute to uh, the workforce knowledge and really empower people just like I am empowering myself so I just looked at that and took that on and just ran with it um, and, and within that I was producing and training in Microsoft uh, Teams live events, which is so much more different than the normal Teams meeting. Um, and I was, I helped out. Uh, in fact, I was a training lead for when we started to migrate again from those share drives over into SharePoint. Um, and then just picked up some qualifications um, uh, from that, I I just was surrounded at the time by people who were like, yeah, go do it. Yeah, if it's going to help you with yeah. your knowledge, yeah, just do it. And that was new to me. That was really new. Um, so I just uh, kept on. Uh, and the first thing I, I probably did, in fact, before I even took on that role was I took on a course uh, for a Microsoft just can try and make sure I, I know what it is. So, uh, I'll get it correctly. Uh, Microsoft Service Adoption Specialist. So I did that course and I found it really um, uh, exciting and it was ram packed with so much stuff that you kind of need in your everyday, whether you're an adoption specialist or not. Um, uh, but that just helped me with like migration and just trying to change people's minds or kind of lead them in the right direction to um, move from one way of working to another and helping them um, maybe discover and uh, develop new processes um, as to what they were doing before. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think kind of like your journey to, um, like is really quite typical in terms of a lot of the people that we speak to over the last 20, 21 months that we've been doing this. And it's like they've come out of school, they've enjoyed the IT, they, they've, they've, they might have done a course, they might not have done a course, but it's just that support structure and the next step that's just, I think generally just isn't in place. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's like a, it's a story we've heard a lot of times, isn't it, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, there is no like real pathways for people that want to get into IT, especially from like you know, females, to actually then go and join an organisation where they can then start flourishing and actually be a part of the women in tech community by doing roles that don't have to be technical, because obviously not not everyone has to be technical to be a woman in tech, but get into an organisation where you can obviously start becoming a woman in tech and having that clear pathway. Uh, from school, if you did X, Y, and Z, or yeah. basically put yourself forward for 
a graduate program at a particular organisation. That's how then you start getting your foot in the door. I say once your foot's in the door in any technical organisation, it's then completely up to you whether you keep your foot in that door and open that door, you know, completely wide open and burst in and you know become you know your full potential, or you go this isn't for me and just basically walk away. But I mean, I'm from, uh, you know, I'm from an admin and clerical background anyway, and I'm, I don't think, I don't believe that a lot of, say, administrators, what people call administrators or business supported, supportive um, officers know how digitally skilled they are, to tell you the truth. They're just sitting there and, for instance, uh, before I came to this trust, I was at another trust and I was, I could be, for our patients, have eight uh, different uh, pieces of software open at a time, looking through pathology, looking through scans, trying to coordinate where I can map their uh, their scans, uh, their bloods, their MDTs, you know, uh, all those meetings and try and get them in to see the consultants. And that I just thought was just normal, but it's not. It's, it's, no, that's a, it's that's not, a that's a lot. A big big range of, of topics, isn't it? <laughs> Poor yeah, IC so, stuff having to manage it all. <laughs> exactly. So I mean, just just that, and and being so, uh, before I was even that trainer and producer, I was an executive assistant, and I had previously um, achieved my 2013 Microsoft Office Specialist um, uh, certifications, and I knew my way around you know, all of those um, applications like Word, Excel, even Access, which is another beast. Everybody knows it's, it's a beast. But I knew my way around that. And that's an achievement a lot of people don't know. So if you, even if you've got that foundation, um, it's kind of like a foot in the door, yeah, like Andrew was saying. Cool. So your new job now in terms of the um, the the diversity and inclusion and is that still quite tech related what's 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 the general day-to-day -day stuff you're doing with that so um part of my role um part of my role is to improve our work streams our bus business systems um some processes uh go into maybe our staff networks and help them with how they are doing uh, running things so far and um, maybe uh, help them with process mapping um, uh, with within the uh, equality diversity and inclusion team at the moment it's quite new because we've just had um, uh, a refresh of the team so we're building uh, new processes ourselves and we're making sure that we're doing a lot of forward planning everything is done digitally and if it is not efficient or productive um, from what we were doing before then we're trying to look at ways of automating those processes um, so Teams is really obviously helping us out and so is SharePoint with those integrated apps like Lists um, Power Automate and the way that we're showing our data even in our meetings to our board um, we can try and move or um, merge from say an Excel spreadsheet or worksheet um, into Power BI to make it more, um, I don't know, cosmetically uh, uh, attractive to um, what people have seen before. Sometimes the visual just is digested a little bit better and equality, diversity, inclusion is a lot to digest and it's changing every day. So it's just an easier way, an accessible way of doing things and that's where I feel like I come in. So even down to the way that we are presenting in teams, some people I've noticed are still um, sharing the screen and that's fine. Um, but sharing through PowerPoint Live is just like the best. I can't go on about PowerPoint Live. Like it's just amazing. When, when it works, Stephanie, can... yeah. Do you know what? I don't, I don't know. I was... <laughs> I was talking on Teams. I was talking at Teams 10x last week, and my problem is I've got one big monitor, right? So yeah. when I do a when I do a sh um, like a share screen, it's like 49 inch wide inch screen, and I went into it, went into PowerPoint presentation to share our slide, and it uh, and 
presenting teams wasn't there. Like presenting teams wasn't wasn't there. And I was like, oh no, what am I gonna do? Like it's not like what am I gonna do? I've only got one big 49 inch screen. So I had to quickly get another like quickly get my screen over there, which I got for the PlayStation, plug it into my um plug it into mine and just like shared it over there. I was like, well, I'll, I'll just be lost without um without it now. Um yeah, yeah. PowerPoint Live in, in Teams. I was I would be lost. I just think it was a meeting settings. I couldn't I couldn't do it. I was just like, oh no, I don't know what to do. <laughs> so part of my role is like uh, before moving into the EDI team, and I'm still using that now as a trainer and a producer, is um, de- developing courses and programs around how to do what you normally do better or more efficiently or more productively, and also don't be scared to test. Um, out but you know with your with your colleagues with your family or with yourself a lot of people don't know about speaker coach even maybe they're um too um self-conscious about uh, presenting or testing um in front or practicing sorry in front of other people but speaker coaching powerpoint is just one of those great tools that you can just present to the computer and that AI will come back with um, a great report on on how you did. Um, and that was my job to to do that. And those those extra tools in Teams, so it makes it more accessible for say people with learning disabilities. Um, you know, what's they that, can. What's that speaker thing called? <laughs> <laughs> what's it called? I, I have it switched on all the time. Every time we do these podcasts, because I like to understand if I'm being repetitive in any particular words that I use. I know, I know, I always use the word obviously in my house, and it drives my wife absolutely <laughs> mad. So it's one word that I'm literally trying to like cut out of my vocabulary. What's because this, what's this thing called? Speaker coach. <laughs> Speaker, Speaker coach. coach. Yeah. Well, what's it in? If you've got, if you've got more on Teams, is there? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's in PowerPoint, but it's also, it should actually be now, yes, actually, it should be in your um, Teams, um, integrated in your Teams now, it's called Turn On Speaker Coach. So while you're presenting, it will just give you these little prompts to say, oh, you've just said a, a word a couple of times there. I don't have this. <laughs> See, this is, this is the joy that I bring to the world. Like, why don't I have this? Is it because I'm not a presenter? No, I should have it, mate. Be, you, have you got Office 365? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you should have it. Because, say, literally, it, it is one of the best things. Because, say, if you're speaking too quickly within a particular meeting, it actually flags up in a little bar at the top saying, you know, think about slowing down. But I know full well because of the area that I'm from, us Brummies, we do speak quite fast. So <laughs> me trying to slow down my natural speaking, you know, it's, it's just one of the things. Oh, is it because it's, it it's in public preview? And I don't have the no, public preview turned on. It should have been released to everybody now, I think, yeah. But again, yeah. it's just a, a, a great way, like it, it, it um, tells you about your pace. If you're, as you said, if you're going too fast, it'll tell you to just slow down a little bit. This is, that's the right rate, so well done. Um, it'll give you some kudos. Um, it will tell you as well if you're looking into the camera or not um and give you those kind of prompts as well and give you a whole report at the end honestly it's really good um again i i find that a great tool for um especially our workforce because we're as we're a mental health trust we're always trying to think of accessible tools that we can um, pass on to our staff networks but also to our whole workforce um so then they know about it and we have a reasonable adjustment kind of policy in there so we try and update that as well with these these things we're always looking at working with microsoft um um to um add and use those tools the best way we can even down to as well so like even in uh, i'm going on and on i should be working for microsoft actually um like uh induction we've changed now inductions to um the live events so people can be can uh, attend their inductions um more frequently from anywhere remotely and if you're presenting um you can have 
uh, different languages in there or sometimes when we have training sessions um, if you present within PowerPoint Live this is one um, through PowerPoint Live the other presenters can uh, view the presentation in different languages I am loving that feature the other day I was watching some somebody present and I thought let me just try Chinese oh my gosh this looks so good I can't understand it but it's lovely um, so there's so many different choices there. I'm just blowing John's mind right now. He's like, what? Speak up, coach. I don't understand. John, John needs it now in his life. That's what it is. He's, he's, he's locked in. One speaker coach switched on. He's shut down. <laughs> that's that's uh, probably yes, one of the good um, things about Microsoft, obviously, from an accessibility perspective. There is so yeah. much work they are doing now to identify, you know, the, the gaps in the you know, the tech they basically deliver. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've had obviously Donna Sarkar on this, on this podcast and a few of the people that work within her team and the work mm -hmm. they're doing is, is, is just amazing, you know. But me and John have got nothing but admiration for Donna um, as, as an individual, as a speaker, the work that's just from Microsoft. She is just a person that when it, when it comes to just even talking about just D and I as well, she just knows what she's talking about. So yeah, I've got nothing but you know positives about Microsoft. Even though you know, I'm, I'm not, I'll say I'm not paid by Microsoft for anything. I know, I say they are doing some really good work to ensure yeah. the tools are there for people I to mean, use. They really helped us out through COVID. So one of the reasons why I was taken on um, as a, a producer and a trainer within my trust um, was um, because we had implemented teams far uh, long before covid which i'm just so proud of of them i really am because a lot of other um nhs foundations and healthcare institutes hadn't had zoom and it wasn't working to its full potential so um, but we had teams in i think from like 2018 and started to teach some of our train and teach some of our um, staff but yeah, one of the reasons why I was brought in was to help our staff to create some um, training uh, courses. I I developed the skill. I don't know how I did it, but I developed the skill on um, creating my own videos um, and narrating against them, using slideshows as well as videos, taking myself, um, sending out through uh, comms, our internal comms, um, top tips for everybody to to be aware of and really engage um, within the software but ultimately our executives felt like they needed to connect to our workforce through the trying time um, because there were so many questions and um, it just seemed like maybe our workforce is lost and we've lost that connection with them how do we how do we get in contact with them and have this forum for them to ask questions and we interact with them? And I was just with my um, with the senior uh, web developer at the time for our, again for our trust. We were just running an hour every week. It turned then to fortnight, and now we're doing monthly. And we're not going to stop that. It doesn't look like we're going to stop it because it's so successful. That forum, that Q and A in the live events, really has just helped people feel a bit more um, connected to our executives. And along with like about vaccinations and um, giving them a clear uh, vision as what we were going to do throughout COVID, um, we could still um, try and make light of things like, you know, communicating what's going on with our staff surveys, um, supporting our staff's net networks with EDNI stuff, or telling people about, we've got this new service, but we need your help with this, and how can we improve on that? So it, it's just been really successful. We couldn't really do without it. So now, We've gone from, say, like a face-to-face -face kind of organisation. Yes, we were doing Skype before and a little bit of Teams, but now we can say we're a hybrid organisation, which is, I just feel that's really, really proud of. And, and I've been a part of that, um, that success for the execs to really connect with our, our workforce. 
which is obviously good for the NHS because obviously everyone knows Doc as well documented the issues they have with funding and stuff. So reducing the requirement for face to face using the products that are there from Microsoft, you know, is a massive benefit for, you know, the NHS to, you know, be be more connected with staff and maybe even patients as well, because it is a, you know, a very powerful tool and it basically proved through COVID how much um, people needed Microsoft Teams to stay connected. And say so, like when I joined uh, Fujitsu, I joined actually the week after the first lockdown. So I spent a lot of my time on Teams, talking to my new colleagues, just doing like, you know, coffee afternoons, so half an hour, yes, coffee, like coffee, coffee, co coffee like calendar appointment, just so we, we had something to, you know, break up the day. And it also enabled me then to, you know, understand my colleagues a little bit more because it was a half an hour, just not talking about work, but just yeah. talking about general chit chat. Yeah, yeah, we did a lot of that across the trust and uh, our, it, that came down from our CEO. Please try everybody to stay connected with your teams, um, you know, however, how much you can. Um, we normally do huddles face to face, but if you can do that over Teams, please do. We were doing quizzes. So we were using Slido um, in there. We, um, forms are now like an uh, integral part of like Teams meetings because you can do polls within that. So oh, surveys like um, PowerPoint, obviously you can create those uh, quizzes in there. Um, watch videos together. I, I just felt like it was a really great tool. But aside from that, um, I think um, we had to move from paperless um, definitely before, just before COVID, strongly throughout that um, and really um, step up our game with the other applications um, that we we're using. So that's why uh, my journey um, with digital skills and through Microsoft, I had to, I felt I had to really be on my game because people are constantly getting in touch with me and asking me, how do I do this? What do you recommend about that? Um, and we were getting so many queries um, in our, on our support desk and, um, you know, it was it was quite overwhelming. And uh, we were, though we can um, deal with them somewhat, um, where we have a we have KPIs just like everybody else. We want to make sure that we get back in touch with our staff as soon as um, we can, because we are, as you know, connected to patient care. And if we are delaying somebody, will that will that be delaying care? So um, we just wanted to think of ways of. And making this service or answering queries uh, more efficient, more efficiently, and uh, again, that's another reason why I was pulled in. But within, say, one year, I had um, yes done that Microsoft Adoption Specialist course and achieved that. Um, I was training lead for the migration team, so I was organising training for all of our staff, and we've just got under 5,000 staff there. <laughs> so creating videos, I created, I taught myself how to create a whole booking page um, in the SharePoint um, spaces. So, um, and that's just basically creating web pages, customizing them and popping in buttons, connecting them to Microsoft Teams meetings. I just taught myself how to do that. Um, and, and set those up, worked with learning and development to advertise it on their their um, sites so that it would be more accessible to our clinic, clinical environment in my other trust. Um, observing them, then definitely more concerned about the delivery. And uh, you really have to catch their eye when you're emailing them or um, advertising anything. So uh, yeah, just trying to make that whole process uh, more accessible. And then I think from then I wanted to. I was, I was, I was meant to talk then, but then I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was going to say, uh, Stephanie, so in terms of. Oh, I'm like sorry. Stuff, you... I go on. You need to stop me sometimes. <laughs> That's good. So, in terms of the stuff like you do, like with the tech community, like I think, did you 
get in touch with Andrew from the Women in Tech call, I guess, was it? No, Andrew did his usual thing. He saw Stephanie doing a presentation, then reached out to Stephanie and went, do you fancy doing this? <laughs> cool. So what was that? What was that um, that presentation about? Like, how did you how did you get how did you get involved? Yeah, so thanks for reaching out. Again, just a bit still stunned that anybody's getting in touch with me about my presentation. I'm really quite overwhelmed by, um, you know, the attention it got. Um, I just felt like I needed to um, add presenting to my peers on my journey to be an MVP, which I'm looking at Andrew's background right now. And I'm so jealous of your certificates right now, but... <laughs> Whatever. They're old, they're old now. I'm not an MVP anymore, but you know they're still there. Yeah, they're still I, I, there. I, to be fair, you can't see on camera, but there's my MCT one as well. So you know, wow. maybe MCT one up as well. Yeah. Nice. So what was that? What was that presentation? Where was it? Like, I'm, I'm I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so um, I'm part of a community um, called Women in Tech, and um, it's not just all women. Um, but it's about women in tech and just uplifting and empowering one another and talking about our journeys, helping one another out with tools that Microsoft has come out with and just getting sometimes a sneak peek um, about what's going on. But it's about a supportive forum and, and community. My presentation was about my adoption kind of of journey into tech so the last as you were asking before the last two years as to what i've been doing so it was really quick and i was having so many technical <laughs> problems to start off with but um as you do um sometimes in microsoft teams but just going on about that but um um it was really interesting um it was just basically my journey from being um, an, an executive assistant covering about five people and um, moving into that trainer and producer role. Um, and what I was what I was doing and just having that background. And when I was training, I mean, a strong element of that was while I was training, I realized that all of the experience I have accumulated um, throughout my other uh, industries in Korea um, has really helped me um, be more relatable when I'm teaching and training um, other people. So I can kind of ask people, well, what do you do at the start? And kind of uh, change the way slightly as to how I'm delivering something um, and just put in those little scenarios. So you might want to do filtering if a consultant runs in and just needs to know this, this and this about a patient. So you just feel more relatable. So um, I think that homed in on everybody. And then just my journey of moving from the adoption specialist to upgrading my Microsoft Office specialists kind of um, uh, certification from 2013 to Office 365, becoming a certified trainer with Microsoft, which is just like a big, big milestone for me. I'm so proud of um, taking on a IOSH um, institute. I think it's institute. I'll come back to that one. An IOSH um, <laughs> um, trainer um, so that I can be more relatable to our clinicians. Um, getting a digital certification so I can have that um, qualification around other professionals, but also with our execs. Um, and then finally, we got a business case agreed um, within our trust to have an extra two people um, to be training and producing those live events along with me. So awesome. it's a lot. So what what I ask this question, I think nearly every, every um, episode is like, yeah, you, you're obviously doing uh, a, a bit now and uh, or a lot in the in the tech community but what like what's the first thing that made you look and go oh there's a, there's another world outside of work there's like a there's a wider range of community like of, of people in the community who are wanting to share content and stuff what what was the bit that made you realize that was out there and what made you want to like add to it as well um add from be like add, like add your own add your own perspective have your own add your own content to it what made you go oh, i want to start presenting and, and doing this type of stuff um when i log off off of work i just go straight onto my personal computer or 
I'm on in forums um, looking at what's new, what's coming out. I get alerts about new things and updates to help myself be more productive and stand out. And I just thought I am, I am doing so much more within this role, which was as, as an EA, I think I thought I've got to move on to something else. That's because it's making me, that makes me happy. Computers and, uh, you know, digital skills and learning more uh, makes me happy. Um, how can I, but ultimately, ultimately what aligns with what I really want to do, which is support people um in being their best selves in their own roles you don't have to move up if you don't want to but be their best selves in that be, be more productive empower people support people um how can i how can i do so much more how can i do much more than i'm doing now and i just i just saw that um in the digital skills community um, and they're so welcoming, and I didn't realise that. There's so much free stuff. There's a foundation that is out there that you don't have to pay for, but if you do, it's not as much as you thought, thought it was. And then if you do want to pay for it, the world's definitely your oyster. Um, and there's so many other people out there um, that um, are just like you. So it was really welcoming, and I, that's why it kind of honed me in on... Um, doing what I was doing, yeah. I mean, that makes the women's sense. teams community is, you know, is a big global thing. Obviously, Laurie Potmire, who's obviously been on this podcast, and we get to see you again um, next week, John. Because obviously, she's on our panel at the South Coast Summit. Um, you know, I've known Laurie for years from when she first started um, the community lead role. Cause, so I was actually involved in Teams before Teams was actually pu public release to anyone. So I, I was no, part of that alpha program. The joys of being one of them back in the day. So, um, yeah. it you know, the, the women in teams community does you know does quite a lot to try and you know get more women from around the world into a group talking more about you know the product and what they can do. Um, so I know you know there's a load of great women that I know who are are involved um, not not just from the UK but also further afield as well. So you know having people within that particular team um there's more people you can identify with especially with the like say karuna for example you know karuna's been on this podcast oh my gosh. she's a big she's powerful like woman <laughs> <laughs> she, she is i'm like every time i see her i'm like oh my god she's here just keep it together don't let her see your face right now freak out <laughs> Uh, she, she's amazing. Okay. Obviously, when we had her on this podcast as well, she was she was brilliant. You know, we didn't expect to have her on this podcast because obviously she is such a you know, a big face she's within done. the Microsoft community. Um, yeah. Obviously, being very present at Ignite, doing the actual opening keynotes with Satya and Adele. So, you know, having people like that on this podcast and just basically showing the human side of them as well is so important. Yeah, I remember like Karuna her episode, like everything. Like she was in between staff. She was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, you can tell she lives a crazy life um, in terms of busy life. And she still, without any hesitation, so just humble. jumped on. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, knows. honestly, like a, a, a Beyonce within like team. She literally is, but so humble, so friendly, always giving everybody props. And she's like a role model. Personally, for me, and that's one of the, what I want to do within um, this community as well, like all the communities that I'm within, because I'm in a healthcare tenant um, for Microsoft Teams. So all of the um, healthcare institutes um, with Microsoft in the UK, I'm a part of that. I'm part of another one that just releases all of the um, new stuff. Um, you know, I'm a part of that tenant and the women, women's in teams. And it's about you know, being role models and making people feel comfortable in this environment. And that's what that women in teams kind of community does. You feel so comfortable just being yourself. Um, and we're different, you know. I don't know if you know, guys, but women and men are quite different. Um, <laughs> so it's just, 
it's just the way that we see ourselves um, within this industry sometimes and just being around like-minded people. Some of us have that imposter syndrome, that syndrome that we can't, you know, shake, even though we're like amazing. We still got that in the background and, you know, the way that we apply for even um, those uh, high level jobs, we just have a different way of thinking. But that added, that added thing is being a black woman as well in, in tech. And again, that's one of the reasons why I look up to her uh, as well. And um, we're, I feel like we're, well, there's not a lot. We're not um, kind of like spotlighted as much as... as you are today. So I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Again, I just like, honestly, like I'm blown away because it's a dudes it's like a really good podcast you're doing really great um job and the conversation that you you have is really comfortable and that's what we need comfortable conversation you know and being culturally aware and intelligent and thinking about every level of 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 this environment and this industry so i'm just so honored i'm here black woman in tech Woo-hoo. <laughs> So you see, you've kind of said it, obviously, the importance of having people visible that you can relate to. I mean, me and John have said it many yeah. times in this podcast. It is massively important to be able to identify someone that's out there in the market space, making big waves and going, you know, she looks like me, she sounds like me. Therefore, you know, I could be that person if I really wanted to basically put myself out there. Just having, you know, yeah. someone there, you can, you know, Kind of not, 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 not benchmark yourself against, but someone you know you want to emulate uh, to, to some degree. Because obviously you, you always want to be yourself, because everyone has their own personality. Um, oh yeah. But you, you, you need to obviously you need someone there just to, to you know. Just you know, that bit of inspiration, it. isn't it? Just being yeah. inspired, inspired to say that I can do that as as well. As well. And and luckily yeah. being the, a a white guy from from London, I can I, I've I've got plenty of people that I can um, I can relate to. It's so it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty easy for me. But like yeah, others like like yourselves and stuff is is a, is a lot different. So I think that's where people like Karuna, um, Donna Sakard, like you know those 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 people who inspire lots of different people, like lots of different people. We're not even talking about people from like Bam and uh, and um, and you know diversity and all that type of, I'm talking about people like me, like Donna, I'll say, I'll say most episodes, Donna Sakaad, like inspires me. Like you sit there in a room where Donna speaks and you, no one, no one talks, no one like glances anywhere else. Everyone's fixated. And that's the type of, like when I look at speaker and I'm like, I need to do a speaking thing. I'm, I'm like, I want to be, I want to be like her. Like, so she oh. doesn't, so it's not like, it's not like, and I tried to say this quite a bit that like, a black woman, for example, doing talking like Karuna, for example, doesn't just have to inspire her mm-hmm. demographic. Mm-hmm. They yeah. inspire everyone. Yeah. And that's and I she think does. that's just something powerful to think of. She re- she she really does, yeah. So I just wish I had um it's not me bragging or anything or having a big head. I just wish that when I when I thought about all um, those guys that said to me, you can't do computer programming all those years ago. I'm talking decades, guys. But when I when I was at well, that you're not point... That, you're not that, you know, you're, I thought it would be like 10 years ago after school. Like... Oh, all <laughs> you checks in the mail. <laughs> no, but I just wish I had... I wish there was somebody at the time that I... that Or a handful of, of women or black women that are just not into entertain only in entertainment or athletics because i'm a big girl um but if there were just people out there that i kind of like related to um that representation which we kind of have now um if i had that i i know that i'd be in a different um stage of life um i'm happy definitely but i would have been someone else so I just hope then that I'm that t- that person that people can look up to now and even more in the future when I'm just like somewhere else soaring, I hope, you know, so. Yeah, That's me. The, the whole, you know, John spoke about in the last episode, 
you know, people need to obviously get into schools and try and offer more support, but it's not just about, you know, women going to schools, going, I'm a woman in tech, it's all about males going there as well and teaching the, the lads in the class that, you know, they have to become allies as well to obviously help encourage them new social circles to promote more people to have an accessible 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 route into YT. Yeah, like you guys right now, your allies and like showcasing us. You don't have to, but but you do, and you're getting it out um, through this medium that everybody's watching. So kudos to you, honest to gosh, and you're doing it in it's in such a well done way, honestly. Thank you. you. Know, Thank somebody you. should be. Somebody should be patting you on the back. I'm patting you on a. This is a virtual pat on the back. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, we're, I think nice. we're wrapping up towards the end of time for us anyway. I've, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone's got a two o'clock soon to, to attend and get prepared for. Um, as I said before, we started this a little bit late. I was I was on back to back to back this morning and managed to get. I still got half a sandwich sitting here. Like um, I haven't eaten. <laughs> What type of sandwich? I just need to know before I go. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to sleep. I went for brie, bacon, and chili chutney. Oh, that's la di da. That is, mate. Oh, same same free zone. Same free zone. <laughs> <laughs> Taste the difference. It is, yeah. But go on, John. You got a final question to wrap it wrap us up then. Yeah, so we've we've spoke about your part, like your past, your present. So, what's the future for you? What's what's the what's the next next goal for you? I think in the tech um, industry, like I would love to be an MVP and um, just stand out um, as a, a, again as a role model for everybody. Um, not that just just my demographic, but for everybody and. I really in, enjoy that, just meeting new people, learning new things um, in that way. And on the EDI side, um, just more knowledgeable about having those conversations with people and then empowering them, making them, helping them and supporting them understand um, people and, and their needs, really. Um, so, yeah, looking awesome. forward to that. Nice one. Um, so thanks for joining us. And yes, it's been a, another insightful episode of the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. And Andrew, next time we see you, I think it's in person, isn't it? Like next, yes, next Thursday at the Hilton. Yes, next week. Next, next week at the Hilton. So yeah, um, I'll see you in person. For the it's been a year now, isn't it, since the last time I saw you? Yeah, a year since the last one, yeah. Ah, <laughs> Every two you, weeks, and per, every, every two weeks, nearly, and, and over, over, over this, or sometimes multiple times. But yeah, it's been it's been a year since. So, yeah, that'd be cool. So anyway, I'm looking forward to doing the session again. So, yeah, and also, guys, if you haven't watched us on, um, or you watch us on, listen to us on Spotify and stuff like that, we would really appreciate everyone who listens to this to go up to YouTube, type in Microsoft Spotlight. Find our page, like, and subscribe, please. It just helps us. Yes, too. because we've got 99 subscribers, and I need one more so I can get a custom URL. So please subscribe. I'm sorry, I've already subscribed, so you, you, you've oh. already counted me in there. Honestly, I have, so darn it. Cool. All right. I'll tell a friend. I'll tell, tell a friend. Tell a friend. Just say so. subscribe to this, no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Anyway, thank you for having for being on, and yeah, Andrew. See you next week, Stephanie. See you soon. Me. All right. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. Please make sure you hit that like, share and subscribe button to help us promote our message. You can also follow us on Twitter at MSFT Spotlight and we're also on LinkedIn, the Microsoft Spotlight podcast. And finally, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Big Titan and thank them for sponsoring this podcast. Remote migrations start here. Let MigrationWiz do the work for you. It's fast, secure and 100% SaaS. 
which means you can migrate at any time and from anywhere. Migrate mailboxes, documents, public folders, personal archives, or even Microsoft Teams with just a few clicks. No special training needed and no customer downtime. When the work matters, choose MigrationWiz.